hormone is a chemical substance which is secreted by our gland it can be either our thyroid gland it can be pancreas it can be our testes which is used in the production of testosterone and it is carried by blood to various target organs where it manifests its action so hormonal imbalance results whenever the production or the transport or the action of any hormone is disturbed in the body hypogonadism the hypo means less and gonad means our uh, if we discuss especially males it's known as testes so decreased production of normal hormone production from the testes so normally what happens in our body is that testosterone is the male androgen which is secreted from the testes in response to a signal from the hypothalamic pituitary area and this testosterone then goes on to act on the body special impact on the reproductive function like the sexual function uh, in the secondary sexual characteristic maintaining the bone and muscle strength and the hematological all the blood parameters also so hypogonadism is any dysfunction in the normal production of testosterone which can be either due to a defect in the testes which is known as primary hypogonadism or it can be because of a defect in the hypothalamic pituitary axis which is the normal stimulus for testosterone secretion which is known as secondary hypogonadism it can be either due to a congenital cause which is known as the cause which was present at birth and it was diagnosed commonly in the reproductive or adolescent age group when the patients come to us so it can be congenital cause because of the deficient production of the deficient maturation of the hypothalamic pituitary axis or deficiency in the hormones which is normally produced from the hypothalamic pituitary axis it can be due to secondary cause also so secondary cause is a cause which the patients uh, comes to harbor later on in the life so the secondary causes of hypogonadism can be either it can be because of the hypothalamic pituitary involvement which is the normal stimulus for testosterone production so if the if we are having chronic illnesses like chronic liver disease chronic kidney disease Uh, diabetes mellitus hiv tuberculosis or if somebody is abusing opioid marijuana or chronic alcohol then the patient can have decreased stimulus for testosterone production the secondary production site is the testes so if any defect at the level of testes be it through a local trauma through the torsion of the testes through any chemo radiation which affects the testes through mumps or cytis if these are the common factors which can lead to deficient production of testosterone at the testicular levels normally the testosterone is responsible for maintaining the reproductive function so the most common complaint with which with the patient come to us is the decrease in the libido or erectile dysfunction patients can have complaint of decrease in secondary sexual characteristic like decrease in shaving frequency decrease in the axillary and pubic hair Besides, testosterone has got also important role in maintaining bone health, normal mood, and uh, so the patients can have complaints of muscle pains, bony pain. There can be a history of low trauma fracture, so we can also suspect hypogonadism in those patients. Patients with hypogonadism can go on to develop poor concentration, poor memory function, and they can be fatigued all time. The hemoglobin can be low, and even the cholesterol parameters can be deranged. The common, uh, which is the most distressing factor for hypogonadism patient, is the decreased uh, secondary sexual characteristic, erectile dysfunction, poor libido, and infertility. Besides that, there are some non-specific symptoms which are difficult to identify. But if the male been developing osteoporosis or low bone mass, ideally, definitely hypogonadism should be ruled out. the patient can have low mood depression uh, complications diagnose hypogonadism in males ideally we should go for a fasting morning testosterone levels which we commonly go for a total testosterone levels if required we can go for a free testosterone levels also ideally the testosterone levels should be at least repeated twice if we are getting a borderline marginal value if the testosterone value is more than 300 nanogram per deciliter it excludes the diagnosis of hypogonadism if the levels are 200 to 300 nanogram per deciliter we need to repeat the testosterone level again to confirm the diagnosis if the testosterone level is less than 200 nanogram per deciliter it confirms the diagnosis of hypogonadism after confirming the diagnosis of hypogonadism ideally we get a lh and fsh level along with other hormonal parameters as required to differentiate the primary and secondary causes of hypogonadism and if needed we have to go for a pituitary mri also 
for treatment of hypogonadism there can be some reversible factors like obesity can also cause hypogonadism which the patient if loses weight can result in reversal of hypogonadism there can be certain transient illnesses which if corrected they can lead to reversal of hypogonadism but there are some factors there are some congenital factors or there can be some acquired factors which are not reversible in those patients ideally we have to replace the testosterone level so in india if you see testosterone level most commonly what we routinely use is through either injectable preparation because that has to be given once or twice in a month only and we have got longer acting preparations also which can be given once in three months besides the injections we have got tablets we have got patches and we have got testosterone gels also in some of the patients with hypogonadism in whom testosterone is not warranted or the patients who are specifically warranting fertility we have to go for gonadotropin preparations also so the gonadotropin preparations are lh and fsh preparation which have to be given on weekly basis so ideally the replenishment is done through the testosterone or gonadotropin injections and then we monitor testosterone on a serial basis to determine the response for prevention ideally uh, the most important preventable or reversible cause is either opioid abuse a common phenomenon which i have been seeing in the recent days is the increased abuse of anabolic androgenic steroids which is commonly used by the patients who are body building in the gyms or something and they are misguided so that commonly results in decreased testosterone production from the body because the body gets a signal that you are already producing enough testosterone so that is misinterpreted by the body and the abuse of these anabolic androgenic steroids can result in low innate production from the body itself so ideally we should not be misguided by any supplements which are containing potential testosterone supplementation other chronic illnesses when corrected they can itself lead to resolution of hypogonadism but if there is a factor which is leading to hypogonadism which cannot be corrected ideally testosterone therapy is warranted but definitely maintaining a healthy lifestyle maintaining a good regular physical activity for 30 to 40 minutes and avoidance of addictions like alcohol opioids and cigarette smoking can lead to prevention of hypogonadism